Good morning, everybody. Welcome to your Wednesday morning flow. Today we'll probably maybe need a block and a belt. And two blocks if you have them would be better. Um, we're going to start by standing in Atadasana at the top of our mats. So when you come to your front of your mat, just bring the feet hips width. Okay, and just kind of balance into all four corners of the feet. So if it's just a little rock forward and back, a little rock from side to side. Kind of feel the length through the soles of the feet, the length into the insteps, and then extension through to your toes. And then gently relax the arms down the spine, rounding the feet into the floor. Just lift the length and gently through the body. All the way up to the crown of the head. So feeling your spine extending a little bit. And just being aware of the balance evenly between the two feet. Keeping our eyes closed, bringing our awareness to our breath. Nice, slow, steady. Softening into the abdomen. Inhale, inhale, exhale, sending out as much of the breath as you can. Almost relax. Just bringing ourselves to a very nice affirmation for today. I am proud of what my body achieves every single day. So from here, just opening the eyes, we're just going to circle the pelvis around the feet. And just being aware of the range of movement that you have, where maybe you're feeling a little bit of tightness. Keep the arms nice and relaxed, as if you're stirring around your feet. You lovely. And then just take it the other way. Kind of feels a little bit strange. Have to go with the flow. Lovely. And then bring the exhales back to centre. From here, just sliding the hands down onto the thighs. We're going to dip the spine and lift the tailbone right up to the back of the head. So standing cat cow. And as we exhale, we're going to tuck that pelvis in round and curl. And then inhale, lengthen, lift that tailbone right up to the back of the head. Exhale, curl it out. Lovely, last time nicely dip. And then exhale, round and curl. And from that nice rounded curl position, just float your head, neck, shoulders, chest, and your thighs, and let your arms fully and completely relax on the floor of the side. And then from here, nice big inhales to really spread and widen and open the abdominal thoracic space. And the exhale just to gently release down the spine and to the crown of the head. And you'll gently feel a little stretch in the back of the legs. It will not be too intense, but you just want to have softness here. Lovely. And then just take your block, which should be beside you, place it out in front of you, about a foot, foot and a half. Place the hands on the block and just inhale, lift the length and into a half or forward form. So we're here just ensuring that the hips sit above the ankles, okay, rather than behind the heels. Draw that nice belly button into the spine. Think of like a lovely tall spine, flat back, long extension to the arms. And then just soften and bend the elbows and have a little fold. It doesn't have to be a massive fold, forward fold. We've got the legs nice and straight here. Just mindful and aware of your breath. Lovely. And then we're going to just catch hold of the two side edges of the block. Just gently roll up the spine. Once you roll up the spine, just float the arms overhead. So now the heels of the hands, palms of the hands, and some of the fingers are on the block here. 
So we're now extending the Tadasana here. I want you to press quite firmly against that block. Just getting that lovely alignment through the two arms, shoulder width apart above your head. And just be aware of how your pelvis is working here. If you tend to sort of round into your lower back and tuck your tail out behind you, just neutralize that spine a little bit. Give a little bit of space into your hip flexors. The legs are nice and active. Lovely. And then as you exhale, try and keep your hands really firmly on the block and think about the lovely right angle. Okay. This will put a lot of load onto the hamstrings. So just be very gentle, very careful. As you exhale, you're going to hinge. Good. Into as much as a right angle as we can, pressing against that block. And just being wary, you can see that the heels are here really firmly pressed into the mat. Sit bones are sort of pulled back. Good. And then gently releasing the block all the way to the floor. Just take it out to one side to have a nice deep forward fold. Good. Inhale into your hands for forward fold. And then gently heel toe the feet together so that the insteps are nicely connected and aligned. Take a nice deep bend into the knees, press into all four corners of the feet and extend the arms forward into your lower chair. And then from your lower chair, just slide and tip the fingers down to the floor, exhaling into a forward fold again as you lift and lengthen into the legs. And then a soft bend to the knees to rip it and roll up that spine all the way up to stand to come into our swinging chair. So as we float the arms above the head, exhale, swing it down and inhale, lift up, maybe a little press back. Exhale, inhale, lift it up, press it back. That again. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Last time, exhale and inhale. Good, keeping the arms above the head, squeeze those inside thighs, insteps together, and just push the hips forward a little bit. And let the torso swing back with the arms in line with the ears. And then as we inhale to come to center, soft bend out to the knees, just gently fold it down, so the fingers to the floor. Find as deep seat as you can go here, and inhale into your chair pose. As you exhale, float the hands to the floor, fold forward, fold. Inhaling into a half. And as we exhale to plant the hands, step jump, or just gently walk back into the plank pose. Exhaling to come to the floor for cobra. Legs and feet slide away, tops and feet press firmly into the mat. Pressing into the hands to float it up. Big inhale. Exhale to float it down, press up through your table, curl out toes, downward facing dog. And from here, descending those nice forelimbs evenly onto the mat, just walk out the legs and the feet. So bending each knee consecutively, finding that lovely press through the four corners of the hands and those lovely little knuckle joints. Do so you keep that lift and lengthen towards the back of the mat? Lovely. And then we'll just gently rest it back into our down facing dog. One or two breaths here. Right, eye gaze goes forward, we're going to step, jump or walk back to the front of the mat. Legs and feet together, fold, fold, fold. And then we'll bend the knees and we'll take the block out in front of us again. So you can have it height wise, okay, or we can have it on its low side, whatever you feel. We'll separate the feet slightly here, okay. And then from here, bend your left knee as deeply as you can. Use your hands on the block and just lift your right foot. Now, it's entirely up to you where you place your right foot. You can place the top of the foot behind you to the left side of the mat, or you can just free float it off the mat, okay? But what our intention here is to deepen into our shins, calves, and ankles by simply bending that left knee, allowing the body weight to drive quite evenly into the four corners of the feet. So as you come down, you should feel the ankle and the shin and the calf really activated here. Okay. And we want to get as deep a bend as we can into that knee. So if you want to rest the foot, rest the foot. 
Okay, but when you rest the foot, sometimes it takes the weight off the standing leg. So think about which puts the most weight into that leg. We just want to keep sinking down in it. And our ankles will probably go, we don't, can't really go any further, but just put the weight into it. Lovely. And then press it up and swap it around the other way. So right foot's firmly embedded. We're going to bend that right knee initially as much as we can first. Either have the foot free floating on that left side or you can place the top of the foot into the mat, particularly if balance is an issue. Okay. And we're just sinking and bending into that knee, pressing into the four corners of the feet. Feel the extension to the toes. Feeling, exploring how your ankle is responding, how your shin, your calf. Getting that nice deep, 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 deep bend as much as we can. Lovely. And then we'll pop the two feet together. Just slide the block out of the way, full forward fold. Good, inhale, gentle roll up the spine, big inhale. As we exhale, we're going to bend the knees, tip the fingers to the floor. Inhale into our chair pose. Exhale, float it down, step jump, or walk back, plank pose. Into our sun salutation, be so cobra or up the facing dog kick, whatever you prefer. Exhaling into downward facing dog. On your next inhale, lift and float right leg as high to the sky as you want. And as you set that right foot into the middle, Swivel that left heel down and just float it up, warrior one. Big. Exhale to float the hands down either side. The foot come onto the ball of that left foot. Step your right back down, facing dog. On your inhale, take it forward into your plank pose and exhaling to the floor. Inhaling through your cobra or your upward facing dog. Exhaling through your downward facing dog. Next inhale, left leg floats up nice and high. Step that left foot in, right heel swivels down, inhaling up into your warrior one. Exhaling to clap hands, step back into your down facing dog. Inhaling forward into your plank, exhaling, and then coming as you inhale into your upward facing dog or cobra, exhaling down the facing dog. We'll just take a little bit of time out here, a few breaths. Okay, you can, you know, swing the hips around a little bit. You can still walk the feet out a little bit. But then just do find that little circle point where you find stillness. And then our right gaze will go forward and step jump and walk the feet again together. Front to the mat. Full forward fold. Inhaling foot katasana. Chair pose. Good. And then don't be pressing all the way up to the sound. Exhaling hands to heart. Let's have a little time out here. Settling into your breath. Lovely. And we'll float the arms up again one more time. As we exhale, we're just going to bend the knees, tip the fingers to the floor. Inhale into our chair pose. Exhale to float, step, jump, or walk back, plank pose, down through the mat for your cobra or your upward facing dog as you inhale. Exhaling into downward facing dog. Inhale, floating that right leg up and spare the natural limb, feel circles down back leg, inhaling up into the warrior one. Exhaling to plant, step back down with facing dog first, and then inhale, rock it forward, plank to exhale, and then inhale up. Good. Exhaling all the way back. Left side, a nice float. Left foot comes in, right heel swivels down, up we come, warrior again. And on our exhale, down we go, back to our down with facing dog. Ripple it forward to plank, exhale. Inhaling up and then exhale all the way back and just take three to five breaths here again. Showing the feet are parallel, okay? 
but if you're clawing the mat with your toes, you should just gently put a little bit more weight into the balls of the feet and back into the heels. And the same with the, the sort of wrist points. More weight into the base of the thumb, base of index finger, baby finger, and side edge of the palm. And then all those lovely little knots. And we'll take our eye gaze forward here again. We'll step down for we'll a walk, front of the mat. Go forward fold as we exhale. Lovely. A nice deep bend to the knees. Of Katasana chair. Lovely. And then exhale, fold it out. Full forward fold. We're going to take a block, we're going to place it behind us. Once we've taken it behind us, gently roll it all the way up, okay, and just step back, okay, so we can place the heels on the block. So we come up onto the balls of the feet and the toes, we'll lift and lengthen through those two legs and just float the arms up to the sky. Good. Exhaling hands to heart center from here. We're just going to come into a nice deep knee bend all the way down. So once you've come into a nice and deep knee bend all the way down, we've got the heels supported on the block. Okay. Push out the knees nice and wide. Okay. Just fold down as much as you can in between the legs. And then sweep the arms around and catch hold of your block. Okay. And just gently fold. Good. So the knees are pressing out wide. Okay. We're finding a nice little deep fold in between those two thighs. Lovely. And then from here, just tip the fingers onto the floor, sweep the two knees together, reach the arms above the head. Nice little stretch up to those fingertips. And then we'll come wide again. We'll now press the arms to the inside of the legs right up to the top of the arm and bring our hands to prayer. And then we'll just tip the left hand to the floor. Now slide your right arm in and down a little bit more so the back of the arm really presses against the shin. Sweep it around, find your right butt cheek. Lift your lovely left arm up, sweep it around, find your right hand. Good. And then gently lift and turn to the left, or rotation, spinal twist. And at this point you can start squeezing the knees together just to put a little bit more twist, a little bit more stretch into your right shoulder. And then we'll bring it back to centre, we'll release the two hands out to the floor. Tip the fingers, squeeze the knees together, reach the arms above the head again. And then we'll come back down again. Okay. Right fingers to back and front, left shoulder drops really nicely and low into that leg. Sweep that left arm around, reach up with your right, round we come. Good. A little twist out to the right. Good. And then from here you can squeeze the knees together and give yourself another little lift. Good. And then we'll release the hands to the floor. Just gently press the heels into the, into the block. Okay. Set the feet out either side. Take a nice deep seated forward fold. Lovely. And then just take the block, place it to one side, heel toe the feet together. And gently soften the knees to roll all the way up to stand. Big inhale. Exhale, hands to heart. Lovely. So we'll bring the arms up above the head. Stand to Tabasana. Exhale, fold out into our forward fold. Lovely. And from here, okay. Just keep softening into your hip flexors and lifting into your sit bones. 
Feeling all four corners of the feet just really nicely moved. Lovely. Inhale into a half. And then we'll just come back into our plank pose, exhaling again, either for cobra or upward facing dog. And exhaling into downward facing dog. Lovely. So from here, we'll just jump onto the knees, cross the legs over, roll over onto our bombs. Okay. So here you'll probably need your block and possibly your belt. So first we're going to stretch out from our hip flexors into our quads here. Okay. So you may need the one block or you may need the two blocks if you need the block to sit onto. Okay. So we're going to bend the right knee, roll slightly onto the side edge of our left thigh, sweep the arm down the front of that leg, okay, and draw the foot, so the top of the foot sits onto the mat, okay, at the side edge of your hip, and then you want to square off your pelvis. So if you're coming into this position and either you have a lot of torque in your knee joint, okay, or you find that your thigh is internally rotating quite a lot, okay, you can either firstly, place the block underneath your bum and level that out. So if you actually grab that thigh flesh and turn it and turn it and turn it, see the sort of seam down the middle of your calf, halfway across your heel and down the middle of your foot. And the knee sits directly in line with the hip, okay? So sometimes a, 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 a bigger block is maybe a little bit too much. So if you even have a towel or you want to roll something up, you can use that, okay? So we're sitting, okay? And our half, half hero here, okay, we're going to just walk the hands back and rest onto the elbows, okay, once we've rested onto the elbows, particularly if you're a block, you're just going to stay here, and you're going to lift the bottoms and just tuck the tail under, so instead of taking, sort of sticking the tail back, you want to tuck the pelvis in and under and almost feel like you're trying to smooth and flatten the sacrum onto the floor. Already you should start feeling stretch from that hip down into that quad. The intention then is to really lengthen out down that thigh to the knee. Okay. If you're finding this relatively comfortable, okay, you can then just go up and lie all the way down. Okay. Continually adjusting that pelvis, the top of the tail smoothing. Okay. Uh, radiating from your hip crease down into that quadricep. Okay. You can also take your arms over the head. Okay. As soon as you start feeling that shim sort of lifting off the mat, okay, or there's pain in that knee, you want to just either back it off a little bit by coming back onto your elbows, okay, or if it's not a knee point to sort of issue, then you want to really press down into that shim. Softening into the back. Great, so from here, we'll just gently press ourselves all the way up. Push that left heel into the mat, draw the sit bone back. So again, you might be sitting on a block here still, okay, or you're sitting onto the floor. Now, once you use your positive hands to place a block around the sole of your left foot, okay, because what happens when you come into your half here is sometimes you'll roll out like that there. So you want to kind of plant the foot against the block, and this is where the belts are very handy because you can place the belts around the block and that will stabilize that foot for you, okay? So once you stabilize that foot, okay, we're starting from a nice right angle between torso and thigh and then we'll spill the elbows out nice and wide, draw that left sit bone back and as we exhale, gently fold down the leg. Okay. So you will feel like you're rolling, okay? So keep drawing that sit bone back, engaging that foot against the block Exhale and fold. Okay. So maybe you might be able to just hold on to the back edge of the block. Yeah. Really surrender into this, you know, explore what your body is throwing up at you. Where the tightness is evolving. How that tightness responds when you breathe into that space. And how it responds when you exhale, release and let go. Okay. Remember, we want to be gentle. 
okay? As we increase our flexibility and our mobility, we want to be gentle so that the body responds rather than fight. Last three breaths here. Really surrendering to this body. And then we'll just release that out to one side. We'll swing that right leg out in front of us. So the leg a little shake out. Sometimes it's a kind of a little bit of less blood flow rolling onto the right side. Now we're going to slide hand down that left shin, really flapping the top of the foot, the top of the shin down into the mat. Squaring off the pelvis. So again, as soon as you square off that pelvis, if there's knee pain or there's a massive internal rotation of that leg, okay, you can either try and adjust by actually grabbing that thigh and seeing does it respond to that? Is there no knee pain? If not, you're placing a block in underneath your bum. Okay. Right legs directly out in front of us. So we're just going to press back onto our two elbows. Okay. So from here, you have to almost actively lift the bum, tuck the tail, smooth that sacrum down into the mat. Okay. And then gently press and really feel the front of that shin drawing down into the mat. So this might be just where you want to stay. If you don't and you want to take it a little bit further, as soon as you lie down again, then we get this like big curvature of our spine, which means we're pulling our tailbone back again. So we want to tuck that tail under and smooth as much of the back into the mat. Perhaps taking our arms above the head. Well, find in a comfortable place. Sometimes it's nice to have your hands on your pelvis and feel it's one hip massively higher than the other. Okay, if it is, that's where you need to press into that side to kind of level it off another little bit. So smoothing the shin down into the mat, we're open from our hip flexor down into that quad. So we're just finding that surrender into wherever you're stretching, wherever you're trying to open it. Okay, so we'll pop back up onto the two elbows. Okay, push that right heel and draw that right sit bone back, placing the block again at the sole of our right foot. Okay, lovely. And then bringing the belt around that foot, around the block, starting at that nice right angle position. Nice big inhale, and as we exhale, we'll spill out those elbows and we'll walk forward into our fold, okay. keeping the eye gaze kind of past that foot. So do you remember occasionally, if you can, to draw that right foot cheek back, draw that right sit bone back, okay? It'll take the pressure off that left leg. And then just surrender into this. So with the block on the foot, okay, being aware that all four corners of that foot are really engaged into it to stop you sort of rolling the foot out. So whether it's the belt around the block or the hands around the block, draw your right butt to your back and just gently surrender and fold into it. Use your breath. Your breath is your best friend. Lovely. Just gently rolling it all the way up. Just place the box to the one side. Get rid of your belt. Lovely. Sweep that left leg out in front of you, give the legs a little shake out. Okay. And we'll cross the legs, roll over the tops of those feet, plant the hands, and we'll step it back into our plank pose. So once we're in our plank pose, let's really push back to those heels, lengthen through the legs, draw the belly button into spine, nice and active. Exhaling then to the floor cobra or upward facing dog. Big inhale here, lovely, and then we'll exhale back into our downward facing dog. 
Lovely. So we're going to start with our left leg here, floating it up to the sky. We'll tuck left knee into chest, we'll step that left foot in. Okay, readjust that back leg, think warrior one position, heel heel alignment was slightly wider if you know balance can be a little bit tricky for you. And then we'll just gently float it all the way up into our warrior one. So from here, we'll just sweep the hands down into our pelvis, okay? And just hold on to the two side hips here. As we hold on to the two side hips here, we want to feel that the pelvis is directly across your mat rather than the right hip being pulled back and the left hip being drawn forward. So hold on to that pelvis, make that adjustment, okay? And see how your back leg responds to that, okay? You might feel that your heel would still lift in that back foot. That's okay, let that heel lift a little bit. Let's get those pelvises really settled, okay? And then we'll extend and press as much as we can into that back leg. Okay. Now we found that nice pelvis position, inhale, float the arms up. Exhale, just take a little back stretch. Not too much, but just to kind of keep yourself working with those hips. Brilliant. And then we'll inhale to centre, we'll straighten that left leg and turn head, neck, chest to face the, the middle of the mat. Now we're going to heel toe that left foot to line up with our right heel, okay? Find yourself into a nice space in the mat. So think about triangle pose here now. So you can soften the sharpness of that back angle on that foot there, okay? We'll take our hands to our hips again. And again, once you feel your pelvis here, when you're standing with your triangle legs, You'll notice that there's a little turn, okay, that your right hip will be slightly forward. That's fine, okay? Hands on those two hips, okay? And I just want you to push back as much as you can into your right hip. Right back as much as you can, okay? Feel how that indents into your left hip crease and increases the stretch into your inside thigh. Good. Keep pressing as much as you can. Good. And then when you come back to center, you're going to press your hip forward in that left side and bring your right hip forward as well okay feeling the indent now into your right hip crease okay a lovely stretch into your left side okay good so you see how it takes the stretch off that front leg and puts it all into this back leg okay so we're going to push it back again good lovely good. one more time really extend and get as much mobility there Great, and then we're going to take it forwards. Okay, from this forward press, okay, really feeling that nice hip crease. So it'll lift up and out of the waist and just take a little side stretch. So using the hands, we're probably going to see right into that crease, pressing forward, then float that left arm up and forward. Good. So increasing the lateral stretch on your left side, really pressing the hips to the front of the mat. Good. As we inhale to come to centre, okay, we're going to press the hips back into this hand here. Keep pressing it back, pressing it back, and then offer your left arm forwards. Okay, so lifting into this hip bone, pressing back into that there, and then notice this lovely extension then into your left leg. Good. A little bit more draw back, a little bit more press forward. Good. And then we'll just simply float that left hand down to the left leg, put our right arm up, pass a triangle pose, rolling that rib cage around. So we've got a super lift into our right hip, the slightly pressed back, is really extended. Lovely. And then we'll just float that arm over our ear, press into the fingertips and draw back into that hip, lifting into the side waist and rib cage. Brilliant. And then we'll just sweep it all the way back up. Once we're all the way back up, arms come up shoulder height. We'll swing round, face the front of your mat, and then turn it in a little bit. Brilliant. And then once you come back to centre, just readjust that back foot so you sit back into your warrior one position. Okay. And from our warrior one position, let's deep bend into that left knee again. Great, and from here, we're just going to hinge and fold down that left thigh. 
So from here, the two shoulders are nicely even, but mirroring how your pelvis and hips are working here. Okay. You'll feel all four corners of the feet working into the mat. Okay. So keep adjusting. Drawing that back thigh forwards, send the arms out wide. Just from there. Once you send the arms out a little into everything, I'm going to sweep them back, interlace the fingers, interlocate those shoulders, and gently bring the arms overhead. Okay. As soon as you start softening into that back leg and letting the hips swing out, okay, sounds forward, keep drawing that hip forward. And then we'll release the hands down either side. We're going to take our blocks either side of that front foot. Now really adjust into that back leg so your hip feels like it's melting forwards to that block. Press up onto straight arms. And then just inhale, straightening your left leg. So once we straighten the left leg again, that internal adjustment inside thighs gently melting towards one another. Lovely lift into the instep of our right foot. And we've got long, tall spines here. Good. From our nice, long, tall spines here, just simply bend the elbows and see how much of the forward fold you can get here, peeling up and then down first. We're using the blocks supportively so we can keep our pelvis really awake. Well, one more breath here. Great, and then, then pushing up onto the straight arms, okay? We're gonna slide the blocks down halfway, okay? So you can have them on your tall side, or you can have them on your flat side, okay? So just experiment with this, okay? You might start on your flat side and then you change them to the tall side. Now you can either place your knuckle joints onto the block, or you can place the palm of the hand on the block, okay? Find something that's going to help and support you hold, okay? You're going to straighten into that left leg again, okay? So once we're there, if we straightened into the left leg and we can't reach the blocks, then just put them up onto their sides, okay? From here, onto the ball of our right foot, okay? So we're like in our little pyramid pose, but we've got our back heel lifted. Now we extend and lengthen into that front leg, and then we're going to lift that right heel and tuck it into our right foot cheek. Breathe. Use the blocks effectively to help you support your balance here. And then pop that foot back down. Walk it all the way around so we're now facing the middle of the mat. Okay. I'm gonna pop our lovely two blocks one on top of the other. Okay. So they're behind our heels. Just turn the feet out of the 45 degree angle. Okay. And all we're going to do is take a nice wee seat onto our block. How are you getting on? Okay, so this is our supported Malasana. Okay, so make sure the feet are at the 45 and degree angle. They're suitably wide enough to accommodate how your knee bends. And we're just sitting up, got cheeks onto the mat, sorry, onto the blocks. And just bring our hands to heart center. So this is nice, but what we want to do is lengthen the spine here. Press out the knees, round into the feet. Okay. And you can always take the feet a little bit wider if you want. Okay. And if you feel like you want to, you can just take one of the blocks away just to deepen that. But we do want to have ourselves seated on the block. It's just a sort of nice restorative squat here, where we don't have to do any work in terms of balance. So it's just gently letting that lobby rotation in through the hip. Lovely. So we'll pop the two fingers on the fingertips onto, we'll press it up, parallel off our feet, take one block to the front of your mat, okay, out about a foot and a half, so you think about the distance from your hips to your shoulders, we'll place our hands onto the block, leave our feet about two and a half feet wide, lovely. Lift those butt cheeks up to the sky, give the pelvis a little swivel, side to side. Lovely. 
And then from here, okay, we're going to rock the body weight onto the balls of the feet, lift up onto your toes. Good. How are we doing? Okay, nice active legs here. Left hand grounded onto the block. Inhale, lift and float right up into that right side. Good. Well played. How are we doing? So again, lovely active legs, lengthened legs, lovely little twist and turn. Brilliant. And then we'll just take the hand back down, change it around the other way, keep the lift, lengthen and float up to that left side. Good. Lots of core working here. And then we'll gently sweep that hand down Drop the two heels back down to the mat. I'm going to place the block back on top of the other one behind us. Okay, a little bend into the knees. Place the hand onto the block so that the heels of the hands face in the waist. Fingertips around the block, side edge of the block. Okay, just gently tilt and fold there. Okay, and then lift and lengthen into your two legs. Now, what you can do here. As you love your wide leg forward folds, as you can push those blocks back a little bit further. And the same thing. Bend the elbows and gently draw yourself through. So feel the spaciousness is still into your hip creases here. And then release the neck. Just take the box, place them at the right foot side, walk it all the way around to your right foot, just step it back into your plank pose. Exhaling again, either for our cobra or our upward facing dog. And exhaling into down facing dog. Lovely, so we'll float our lovely right leg up to the sky. Step our right foot in, think about warrior one, heel, heel slightly wider. Gently bring yourself up into a warrior wall. Okay. And then releasing the hands again back to those hips. Okay. So once you hold, you'll find that lovely iliac crest. Okay, this bone around here. Okay. You're going to hold on when you feel that. Okay. And adjust your pelvis. So when you're adjusting your pelvis to the front of your mat, okay, it may be better for you to take your leg a little bit wider. Okay. As you're adjusting it, if your back heel lifts a little bit, that's fine, okay? But once you've got the pelvis where you want it to go, press that heel back down. Really extending and lengthening into this back leg. All right. And then we'll bring the two arms up. Good. Keep that pelvis really, really red, active, really aware. And then we'll stretch it back a little bit. Good. So don't worry if you don't have a really big bend into your front knee, okay? Because when you bend into the front knee, sometimes it just scoops your pelvis out of action here. So keep whatever bend makes your pelvis stay nicely away from the way. Lovely. And then we'll just release the arms. We'll come into that triangle position into the mat, trunks in the center of the mat. And again, let's just push the hips forward and back. Firstly, just to kind of tease them into a little bit more mobility. Just exploring again how it feels, where do you feel the tightness, hip creases, does it radiate a little bit into your sacrum, into that sacroiliac joint? Just kind of massaging it out, okay? And then we're going to push it as far forward as we can. Good. So taking the hand onto that hip, we'll sweep that lovely arm up and under. Good. So I'm not saying push that hip, but you're using that hand to sort of just guide it. Lovely. And then when we come back to center, we're going to push this hip sort of back into that hand. 
releasing the arm in. So we get that lovely indent, hip crease, lift, lift back, reach and offer it forward. Feel this lovely extension and stretch into your right leg. Good. A little bit more draw back and a little bit extension forward. And then we'll float that hand down, lovely and gently float our left arm up into our triangle pose. Good. So feel a lot of space around your pelvis here. Right into this hip here, right into the hip crease, into the groin. Right, and then we'll float it all the way up. So as we turn, we're going to readjust that back foot because it will always kind of be sort of sinking out a little bit wider and then the hip will be turned out to the side of the mat. We'll adjust that foot. Okay. Back here, pelvis is nice and level. We'll take a bend into our right knee and just simply fold down that right leg. Okay. Swear that off as much as you can. And then just float the arms out nice and wide. So, what awareness you need to have here is from your right knee into your right sit bone, as if you're really lengthening your femur into that hip socket. Okay? Drawing like a nice line down your mat rather than sweeping out to the side. Back leg, hips being drawn to the front of the mat. Then we'll take those hands behind our back, interlace the fingers, then locate arms to sweep it up and over. So internally adjusting. Breathing. Brilliant. And then as we release the hands, we'll take our lovely blocks either side of that front foot, okay. lengthen into straight arms, and then extend and lengthen into your extended leg in front, right leg, drawing back and lifting into that sit bone even again, feeling that lovely line right down the middle of the mat. So take your time with your extension into your hamstring stretches particularly, okay? Um, Again, if you feel that left hip's been drawn back, okay, extend it slightly forward and draw back into your right. And then we'll just bend the elbows and have that little fold down that leg. The nice thing about using the blocks here is that if you find it really hard to engage in that back foot and the only way you can do it is by pulling the hip out, it's okay if the heels just slightly lifted because our pelvis is forward facing. And then we can press into it. So it's helping us to really create the alignment that we need. And actually re-educating um, re our muscles as we go. Okay. And then we'll push up onto a straight hand. So what we're going to do is take a soft bend into that knee so we can slide the blocks back again, flat side, tall side, whatever you think is going to work, halfway down, okay? Placing either the hands like this or the hands like this, wherever you feel most stable, okay? We'll come onto the ball of our left foot, okay? We're keeping our right leg straight. So we're drawn back into that. We're grounding firmly in and then we're lifting. Now I know this is a lot of work on your right leg. Tuck that heel into your bottom. Lift the right butt cheek up. Find the four corners of the feet, really working into that mat. Lovely, and then we'll pop that foot down, bend the knee, just gently place the blocks out to the side, okay? Step back into your down facing dog. Inhale forward into our plank pose and exhale again, either cobra or up facing dog. Nice, soft. Exhaling down facing dog. And again, just a few breaths here, reconfiguring the forelimbs. 
And we'll just step our right foot in between the hands, walk it around. So we're coming into slightly wider leg fold and roll it up. Good. So from here, rather than being sort of two and a half, take it out a little bit wider. Not massively wider, but you're finding an awful lot of pressure here. Okay. And from here, pelvis. Hand to the front, hand to the back. Okay. I want you to tuck the tail under. Okay and really see how the hips then push forward. So the line of the pelvis moves forwards, okay? So once the line of the pelvis has moved forwards, if you look down the sort of slopey edge of your legs, your hips will almost be in line with your toes, okay? Now from here, we're just gonna gently take our hands, slide them over our butt cheeks, down to the back of our thighs, lift the chest wall up into the chin, and as we push the hips forward, we're going to just, just gently take it back into a little back bend. So breathe, round into all four corners of the feet. You can always keep your chin tucked into your chest if your neck doesn't like it. Lovely. And then very gently as you roll it up. Readjust the pelvis, just turn the heels in, give yourself a little squat up and down. Good. Feet parallel now. Okay. Three and a half to four feet. Okay. You're going to use your blocks if you need them. So we're going to place one at each end. Okay. So firstly, we're going to lift the toes and the left foot in slightly, right foot and leg all the way around. Okay. So coming into a warrior two position here. Okay. Bend that right knee. So once you've bent the right knee, again, awareness to your pelvis, okay, notice that it doesn't sit flat across the side edge of the mat. This is just a very gentle turn, but we want to draw back into this hip. So we want to feel the lift from the hip from the inside thigh, okay? And with an knee bend, hold the hands onto that pelvis. Now, when you sort of rock the pelvis like we did in our triangle pose, okay, forwards and back, notice how less kind of movement we have. We don't have as much movement here, but there is a little bit of give, okay? So we're gonna sit deep into this here, okay? Now in order to get that lateral stretch back for our, our, our um, reverse warrior, okay, it's very necessary to deepen the bend into that knee and lengthen back to reach it up. So you're still getting this lovely little bend here, but you haven't got as much movement before. Now, once you laterally stretch, if you deepen the bend in the knee by taking the foot away a little bit more, you find you can take it over and now we switch. Lovely. And then as we bring it back, just into warrior two arms, okay? When we want to laterally stretch this way, if we straighten the leg, it feels quite easy, okay? but we don't get as far as we would maybe like to be. So we maintain the bend into that knee and lengthen from the knee right into that glute as if you're drawing that sit bone back and then float it across as much as you can, sweeping the arm down, maybe catch your block, place it to the inside, and then let's bring our left arm up and over. Wonderful. Brilliant. So from here, release the left hand down to the floor. Just get the block out of the way. Back left knee, okay? And you're just going to spin it down towards the edge of your mat and roll onto the instep, okay? Once you've rolled onto the instep, okay, you'll notice that your right knee swings forward a little bit, okay? So when we outwardly, when we outwardly rotate this hip now, okay, what we're allowing is where the hip flexor attaches onto the head of the femur. It exposes it. So instead of being sideways here now, I want you to turn and face that front leg. Okay. Once you've turned and faced the front leg, again, use your blocks if you need to. You've got the instep on the floor. You've opened the space so that the real attachment where that hip flexor is attaching onto the head femur is able to be exposed and really get a nice stretch into that hip flexor. Lovely. And 
I know it's a very, very, very deep stretch, but let yourself float forwards over that right foot. And then we'll walk the hands right parallel to those feet. Fold it down, give yourself a little rock forwards and back. And rolling all the way up the spine again. Lovely. So from here, we're going to do the same on the other side. We're going to turn our right foot in slightly, left foot and leg all the way around. Okay. Hands to the pelvis so we can feel what movements are occurring when we do each of these things. So we're going to bend our left knee. Okay. So when we bend our left knee, we start feeling our right hip swing forward. Okay. We know we need to lift the inside thigh and lift it into that hip. Good. So getting depth without losing the grip. We're going to keep our hands onto the hips and push it into that hip. Good. Keep drawing it forward and then we'll float that left arm up and over. Seat into that left butt cheek. As we come to centre, okay, again, notice how little movement there is. Get the deepness, okay, to lengthen from the knee into that lovely thigh, into that glute. Lovely long lateral stretch, sweep it down again, maybe use that block, reaching the right arm up. Deep one. Do you want to feel like you've created a lot of space in this hip socket here, okay? And then as you deepen into that there, that you create space from that hip flexor into that groin, into that foot. Lovely. And then we'll take the hand down to the floor. Okay. So you just simply want to drop the knee to the edge of the mat. Come on to the end step. Okay. If you need to shimmy the left foot back a little bit, left foot shimmy back a little bit. And then we're pushing the hips forward and we're turning head, neck, chest, face forward. So it's not necessarily a very nice sensation of a stretch, okay? but it's really, really captivating into those hip flexors. Breathe, taking it forward, again using the block if you need. Lovely. More breath here. Lovely. Great. And then just from here, wiggle that right knee in, step back into your down facing dog. Your hips a little shake out from side to side. Inhale forward and plank pose, exhaling last little cobra or up the facing dog. And then exhaling down to face the dog. So here, I just want you to close the eyes. Bring your awareness fully into the pelvis. Okay. You feel like you're kind of dropping your tummy into your front hips. Okay. Neutralize into that tail a little bit. Lovely, and then we'll just come onto the knees, cross the legs over, pull ourselves all the way to lay down again, grab and hold of these blocks. So, bombs into the middle of the mat, just lay down. So the first thing we're very simply going to do is take the block, paste it under our sacrum. Okay. And once we've taken it under our sacrum, okay, so if you feel the kind of curvature of your butt cheeks into the little flat bit, the little flat bit sits into the middle of the block, okay, and then we'll just bring the soles of the feet together, let the knees just roll out wide, so we've got a hip lift with our Vajrakonasa, hip open, so this gets nicely into our hip flexors, okay, and just relax the arms down by your side. 
So a couple of little just nice, restorative, but quite strong stretches. So when you're coming into the flat box side, if you feel I'm not getting as much benefit as I might be able to get from this hair, you can always tip it up onto its middle side, okay? But just be very aware, okay, that you're not getting to a point where when you're fully sort of relaxed in it, that it's really catching and you feel it kind of nervy and pulling. You want to be able to just take it beyond where you're at by just relaxing and letting go into your Close the eyes, take that little bit of time out. You have a little bit of curiosity about how this is working for you. The catch more in one side. I'm going to shake that little bit, a little bit. So from here, take the hands to the two side thighs, gently walk in, okay? Now, if you have your block on its flatter side, okay, we're just going to put them tilted onto its higher side, not on its higher side, okay, but it's still in that same place. Okay, good. So you want to stabilize the sacrum nicely onto the block. You can hold on to the side edge of the mat, just as much as you can lift your knee. So the block's not in the right place, you might wobble a little bit. Sometimes those foam blocks will wobble a little bit as well. You want to find that nicely onto the block here, okay? And then just lift the legs up. It's almost like a supported half shoulder stand here, not fully, but kind of. We've got the legs in the air and we've got the chest all lower than the hips. Good. Now, making sure it feels that it's in a nice place, okay? We're going to come into a lovely leg over the head, okay, so the block is supporting you. You can put it onto its side if you want, okay, or put it onto its height. But what this does, it lifts the hips, it allows you to let the legs sink over the hip. And then just gently hold onto the back of the legs. Breathe nicely into your glutes, into your hamstrings. Break down into the Well, this is a really nice way to stretch. You can gently wrap the arms around the back of the leg. Again, if the legs aren't coming that far, you can just put weight into them and let them sit at whatever angle they're at as well. Brilliant. So just hold it onto the block, just put the heels into the mom. Make sure you roll over and just pop the two feet down to the mat. Okay. Bridge pose. We're on our higher side if we can be not a higher side. Good. And just relax the arms down by the side. And from here, we'll lift our right knee up, catch hold of our right foot, okay? As if you're coming into half hero, place the instep along the side edge of the block, okay? And gently press down into that shin. And just hold here, three breaths. So do you feel this releasing out? We've got multiple attachments here. We've got the own psoas, psoas, and 
Just sliding the foot back maybe not a little bit and pressing down onto the chest. Breathe expansion into the pelvis. Lovely, and then we'll just swap it around. Lifting the left knee, catching the foot. Really drawn here. So think about how you come into your half here. You want to almost slide the instep right into the side edge of that glute try. Okay, keep working the foot back. And then gently pressing the shin down to the mat. Balance. Nice open hip flexor. Intention with your breath. Sliding the foot back and up a little bit. Lovely. Brilliant. And then gently releasing that foot out, okay, just lift the bum, gently slide the block out to the side and peel each vertebrae back down to the mat. Once you've peeled each vertebrae back down to the mat, smooth out the back onto the floor, lift your left knee into the chest, all these other little bit take off. Pop that left foot down, do the same with the right. Great, down. Lovely. Once you've got the foot down onto the mat, just walk the feet out a little bit wider and this very gently just start swinging the knees from side to side. Now we're going to swing the knees fully over to the right hand side, press that left inside thigh down into the mat. Smooth. The two shoulder blades nicely into the floor, sweep the left arm out. Rest down, 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 down. And we'll bring it back to center. We'll do the same on the other side, right inside side, press down, 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 into the back. Right arm sweeps out. Lovely, and then we'll go all back to center this time. We can lift the two knees, tuck them in, give ourselves a lovely little squeeze. And then roll out from side to side. And then a lovely little back massage. So we'll circle the knees around the hips. One way, really pressing into each aspect. Side hip down into sacrum and tail, side hip into low back. Lovely. Sometimes if you sweep the legs a little bit wider, gives you a little bit more the feeling of encircling this oval shape around those hips. Lovely. Then we'll just pop the two feet onto the floor. And slide the legs and feet away, coming into our Shavasana, softening the butt cheeks. Smoothing and lengthening out the spine. Just rest the hands onto the hip bones, elbows, stay out wide. Stand into our breath. Mentally scan the body, how does it feel? Bring yourself back to your affirmation of the day. I'm proud of what my body achieves every single day. Just 
to silence your breath and hear your concern. Nice up to fully let go. This one section. Okay, so let's gently let it open. Open our hands so we can hold it shake out. And then we'll extend the stretch. Making sure you feel that every part of your body is being brought into the stretch. And we'll walk the feet in. Okay, so again, just smooth the back into the mat and then gently lift the knees. Tight, sweet, and hug. And then we'll just pull up, ready for the rest of our day. Well done, everybody. Namaste. Have an absolutely lovely day.